Hey, everybody. I'm just going to zoom my camera in a little bit here. There. That's better. So welcome to Fly Tying Monday. We haven't done this in a couple of weeks. Uh, not, I don't think since I lost to Flagler again. But um, anyway, here we are uh, doing fly tying. And um, I know I'm a little early, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chat a little bit here and watch who uh, comes in and says hi, so that people that uh, come on at three o'clock, I think I I think it actually for some reason got scheduled at three o five. Uh, I scheduled it, so maybe I I goofed, but uh, I know I think it said three o five on YouTube or something. Anyway, so. We'll um we'll start we'll start a little bit after three. And um, okay, so we have Jeff from Winnipeg. I see Jeff. Don't see anybody else, but uh, I'll wa I'll keep watching. And I hope everybody is um, is enjoying the spring weather wherever you are. It's been. Um, been hot and cold and today in Vermont it is absolutely spectacular it's in the 60s and sunny and dry and uh, really nice things are blooming so I was just out in um, just out in Missouri actually trout fishing in Missouri and uh, fishing for wild trout don't ask me where uh, but uh, anyways it was a it was a wonderful experience and um, Caught some wild rainbow trout in Missouri that are supposedly uh, original McLeod strain rainbows. So I thought that was um, I thought that was pretty cool. And I apologize for, I, when I posted this this morning. I forgot to put the uh, I forgot to put the um, pattern recipe up there. So uh, for those of you who are just coming in, I'm so sorry. I see a lot of you are here now. That's cool. Jose from Mexico City. Roger Bird, of course. Lily Renzetti. Lily, I'm using one of your vices today. Alan Aviation. Warren from New Zealand. And Matt and Larry from Grapevine, Texas. Roger, I'm not telling you where in Missouri. I told you, I'm not going to say. Um, Netherlands. Wow. Ralph from the Netherlands, Reading, Pennsylvania, uh, Dan in Missouri, and Stan in Carson City, Nevada. So we got people from all over the place. And uh, I really, I really, in Belgium, Guy from Belgium. So I really appreciate you uh, coming in today to tie along with me. And um, we're going to tie a pattern. It's one of my patterns, actually. Um, I have. I have a bunch of patterns that that I use that are not not terribly innovative, but uh, a lot of them are variations of of common flies. Uh, just I've just made some variations over the years. It's a nice thing about tying flies, as you all know, because you can take a standard pattern and you and if you you think you come up with a better variation or maybe a variation suits your local waters better, uh, you can tie that pattern. And so uh, these are patterns that um, that I use, and we'll be tying tying a bunch of them this year. So this one is uh, is one of mine, and uh, they're actually uh, the the flies are sold on the Orvis website now. I think I don't know if we put a link up there, but we'll put a link up there uh, to the to the patterns. And um, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it there. We'll put a link. Uh, there's the link to the uh, my fly collection. Again, as I said, they're not none of them are terribly innovative, but they're just variations that that I use of um, you know of other flies. And, and most, let's face it, most flies are rare. Most flies are sorry about the dog. It must be UPS is here. Most most flies are variations of other flies. There's you know, very few that's really um, new and innovative these days, except something like a game changer. Um, you know, some of the, some of the, there's a few that are, that are quite innovative, but not mine. Mine aren't that innovative. Anyways, so this is a wire mayfly nymph. And 
uh, it utilizes a technique that I haven't seen anywhere, although I'm sure someone else uh, does it this way. Cer certainly, I'm not the first one to do it. But I take three uh, different colors of wire and uh, and wind them together to form a, a more of a modeled variegated body. You know, uh, most most mayfly nymphs don't have a a monotonal body, and that's why some of the better patterns that we use, such as hair's ear nymph. Um, are, are a mixture of colors. And so uh, I just took three different colors of wire and, um, and, and I just wind them together. I'll show you, I'll show you how I do it. It's not that difficult. This fly is not, is not hard. And most of the patterns that are in my, um, my collection are not difficult patterns to tie. Uh, my own patterns, I like to be able to crank them out quickly. The night, the night before a trip, because I'm not, I'm not so organized. Uh, so most of them are simple, and especially with nymphs, because you lose a lot of nymphs, you lose a lot on the bottom, and um, so I don't want to get emotionally attached to uh, my nymph patterns. I don't want to take too much time tying them because I'm going to lose them pretty quickly. So anyway, um, yeah, the fly is a is a uh, it's a it's an imitation of lots of different mayfly nymphs um you know if this fly looks a lot like a, a hendrickson nymph it look, lot looks a lot like a sulfur nymph the various kinds of sulfurs and pmds and it also actually will work for a small stone fly so um you know it it imitates lots of stuff and that's uh, that's the kind of fly I like that that um, i can use in in lots of different places uh, because it imitates lots of stuff so uh, that's the that's the uh, philosophy behind this fly, and I'm going to use three colors of ultra wire on this fly. Don't get hung up on the particular colors that I use on this. Take a look at the mayflies that are in, or the stoneflies that are in your local streams, and make it take a a cell phone picture or make a note of, of the different colors in the body of the fly. And then just pick three wires that, uh, that imitate those colors. So you may, you may want to add a, a black or uh, a, a yellow or, or something. I'm going to use uh, in this one, I'm going to use two colors of olive wire, uh, a bright one and a dull one, and then a brown, a brown wire. But um, again, you can uh, you can pick your own and don't don't so don't get hung up on the different colors of wire. Uh, just pick pick three that look good together and try try it out. Try this technique out. It's a very durable fly. Um, you don't have to put any epoxy or anything on the body because it's wire and it's not going to fall apart. So that's the fly. So why don't we uh, why don't we start tying? So I am going to start with a size 14, 2X long nymph hook. I, I like the uh, traditional nymph hook instead of, uh, instead of a jig hook, but you could tie this. You could tie this on a jig hook if you wanted to. You could tie it on nearly any, any sort of long shanked hook. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I like it. I like the looks of it on a, on a 2X long nymph hook. And I'm going to get a, get a black bead. And it's a black tungsten bead. And I don't even know what size it is because here's my bead collection. Very disorganized. I don't even know what size any of these are. I don't even remember what the sizes are. Um, if you really want to know, you can get one of these very cool uh, hairline bead gauges, but I picked, I eyeballed it, and I don't like it. I don't like a huge bead on this fly. I like a fairly small. So uh, this is probably one size down from an eighth inch. But let's let's put it in this uh, this bead gauge here. Okay, so it's a it's a seven sixty fourth bead, which is. Uh, 2.8 millimeters. Another thing I like about this 
this um, hairline hook hackle and bead gauge because it actually has the millimeters and the fractions in it. And probably the hardest part of tying this fly is to put the bead on the hook. <laughs> um, I'm looking, I'm, I'm rolling this around until I find the small end of the bead. And then I'm putting it over the bend. And so this is about the proportions you want on the bead. And I tie this in uh, 14, 14, 16s, and 18s. This one is on a 14, just so you can see it a little bit easier. But that's about the proportions you want on the fly. Here's a, here's a 16 in the vise that I tied earlier. So that's about, that's about the way it should look. Not, t not a terribly big bead. Uh, I typically fish this fly below a heavier nymph. You know, I almost always fish two nymphs, unless I'm dry dropper fishing. And um, I, I, this one is not going to, it's not going to get down to the bottom in deeper, faster water, but it's got a little weight to it. And so I usually fish this below a heavier stone fly or a bigger mayfly or something. Um, and I know that the pattern description that you see there said olive thread, and that's a mistake. It should be black thread. I apologize for that. Uh, but you can tie it with olive. You can tie with this with any color thread if you want. And I'm just going to start my thread behind the bead and just, you know, build up a little bit to keep the bead from sliding back. You, you don't have to really secure that bead because... Uh, I'm going to jam a bunch of stuff uh, into that bead, and uh, I'm going to put some UV cure epoxy on it afterwards. So I don't really need to don't really need to worry about securing that bead too much. And then I just realized that I need a wood duck feather. I got everything ready, and I forgot a wood duck feather. Uh, I got a bag of wood duck here. This is a wood duck shot by our very own Phil Monahan a couple of years ago. And I'll select just a nicely marked wood duck feather. And I'll grab, I don't know, four or five fibers. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Not too many. That's probably... Just enough to give the impression of that speckled tail that a lot of mayflies have. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll use that. That much. I don't know how many there are there. Probably four. I'll trim them off. How many of them do I have there? I don't even. I can't even count them. But that looks about right. <laughs> so anyway. And I will start, I'll measure it. I want the tail to be fairly short, maybe about that long. Not a shank length. I like my tails on my nymphs a little shorter. So I'll get it till so it sticks out a little bit less than a shank length. And then just start tying in these wood duck fibers. You could use any speckled. You could use uh, cocktail leone or, you know, anything anything that's that's speckled and i'm going to pull those tails a little bit toward me and up so that they sit right on top of the hook shank like so and then i'll just trim off the front end of those like so now i'm going to prepare my wires so I have, and this fly, I want it to have a brownish olive mixture with just a tiny bit of flash. So what I'm going to do is take three, I'm going to take a brown, kind of a dull olive, and then a, a kind of a golden, shinier olive, and I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull about oh, six, six to eight inches 
from each one because I'm going to tie multiple flies and I can tie a whole bunch of flies with this arrangement. So I got my brown one there and I'm using a uh, size small ultra wire. And I find that size small works pretty well in anything from a 14 to an 18. Now I'm going to pull my dull olive about the same length. And then I'm going to pull my little bit shinier olive, which is already unraveling on me. And I'll get a piece of that. Break it off. This fine, fine stuff, you can just break it. You don't have to cut it. And then to keep these together for multiple flies, I line them up. And I tie an overhand knot in the wire. And, and so that way, when I put them down on the tying table, I don't have to keep lining them up for the next fly. Keeps it together. So I'm just tying an overhand knot in those wires. And so I've got my three wires there all together. And I got to get my my cutters. Julia, any questions so far? Gotta be questions. Julia, we have a couple of questions. Sorry, okay, my video well. is being. We have a couple questions. Um, okay. The first is how heavy is this nib? It's not terribly heavy, but it's slim and it and it doesn't hold any air. It's very absorbent, so it sinks fairly quickly, but it's not the heaviest. You know, it's not a big clunker. So uh, I like to use these for sight fishing when I'm not using an indicator in the fish are in shallow water. And as I said at the beginning, I'll generally hang it below a bigger nymph, like a stonefly or something. So it's not terribly heavy. Okay. And Alan's asking, is... Um, Coke de Leon stronger than wood duck, and they said that their wood duck tails always seem to break off. Yeah, it is stronger, and I think that's why a lot of people use it. I just like the looks of wood duck. And yeah, wood duck does does break after a while, but I generally lose my nymphs before the wood duck tails break. So, <laughs> I don't worry so much about it. I just like the looks of wood duck. I just love it. It has that, it has a beautiful, beautiful texture to it. Um, but but cocktail Leone is is much yeah I think it's much stronger so probably a better idea if you want your nymphs to be durable. And those are the only questions we have at the moment. But I'll pop back in if we have any. Okay, more. okay. So now I'm going to take my wire and I'm just going to lay it kind of crosswise, going away from me. And I got all three wires together, and I'm going to give it. few tight turns to hold it in place and then I'm going to cut you can you can actually what I can do is just pull these until they're the right length and then I'm going to wind forward so secure those wires this is an interesting question, Tom. Chris is asking, uh -huh. or I mean, Thomas is asking, um, we have actually a few questions. Okay. Does it matter the order in which the wire is combined? I don't think so. Okay. Nope. And then I don't think so. Warren's asking if you can uh, use an inverted bead. An inverted bead. An inverted bead. I don't know what an inverted bead is. <laughs> I don't know either, but you, I was... you probably could, but I don't know what I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, maybe maybe one can uh, be a little more specific about about that question. And then uh, Chris is asking, could you 
Euro style fish this, or does it need to be heavier? No, you could Euro fish this um, mm -hmm. in shallow water and with a fine tippet. Yep. Okay. And again, Great. generally Euro nymphing, you use two nymphs, so use it with a heavier nymph. Awesome. And then Wilson's asking if you could use gray partridge as a substitute. Yeah, it, it doesn't have, it's not quite as nice looking as wood duck or Cote de Leon, and mm -hmm. it's a little more fragile, but yeah, you okay. definitely could. You could use any speckled, I think you could use any speckled feather. You could use grizz, grizzly hackle or, you know, any barred, any barred feather at all will work. You could use mallard, could use teal, could use gadwall, uh, you know, there's there are lots of different things you could use, substitute. But if you substitute, it won't be my pattern anymore. It'll be yours. <laughs> okay, those are the only questions we have for now. Okay. Right. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna use my thread. Oh, this is 12O thread, by the way. You could use 80 if you wanted to. And I'm gonna just build up a little taper to that body. I'm gonna stop the body at about the midpoint. But I'm gonna, you know, kind of concentrate my thread wraps to the forward part of it so I get a little bit of a taper. Like so. And I'm going to end about about the middle, halfway between the eye and the bend of the hook. And then I'm just going to take those wires, and I don't care which way they lay in there because all I want is a modeled effect, a variegated effect. So I don't really care how they fall. But you can see that it's it's a nice, you know, it, it, it's ribbed, same as a mayfly. And they kind of fall together and give you that nice variegated body. And then I'm going to lift the wire up, take a couple of tight turns maybe three and i'm not going to helicopter this i'm going to cut them short then bend them over and secure them in place like so doesn't really matter you're going to cover up that thorax so there is your body. And it's got a nice, you know, it's got a nice um, tapered, variegated look. Looks like a mayfly to me. And I suspect it looks like a mayfly to the trout because they eat it. So they think it's something. Maybe they think it's a stonefly. I don't know. And then I'm going to take my uh, thin skin for the wing case. And I'm going to make it about, about a hook gap. Maybe a little bit less than a hook gap in diameter. Or in, uh, yeah, in, in width. Sorry, diameter width. And then I'll just cut a piece that's about... I've got somebody at the door. Hang on a second, guys. I'm going to mute myself, and I'll be right back. I know. I think this is the part where I come on and make jokes, but hope everyone's having a great Monday. I am here in Illinois visiting. That's where I'm from. Um, oh, Tim Flagler. <laughs> come on. We want to see your face. Come on. We want to see your face. Uh, Julia. I just, come on, Julia. well, before come on, my Julia. internet was coming, cutting out a little bit, but that's because I was outside. All right. Hold on one second. 
Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Did you say Flagler is watching? Oh, no, Tim Flagler at the door. Put the, uh -huh. <laughs> the tie off. <laughs> okay. No, I'm sorry. I've got somebody painting my house and he, <laughs> he needed to talk to me. All right. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to redo, I'm going to cut, recut this piece of uh, thin skin because I made it a little too wide. I could save that piece for little tiny nymphs. Okay. And then you peel the backing off the thin skin. You could use a black feather here if you want. Thin skin is just a little more durable. Um, you could use a piece of raffia. Uh, you know, anything black, solid black will work. And then I'm just going to attach this wing case. I'm going to tie it in. Just make sure it stays on top of the hook, centered on top of the hook, and then just bind it down like so. Make sure that you come all the way back so you don't have any thread wrap showing through there. Looks okay. And now... I'm going to take uh, some brown dyed pheasant tail. This is just the color I use. You could use any color pheasant tail your little heart desires. Or you could use, you could even use dubbing. The reason I use pheasant tail is because it's a, it's a neat material. It seems to be kind of magical. Uh, and also uh, it absorbs water better than fur because I want this thing to sink quickly. And I'm going to take about a dozen fibers of, of this. Yeah, maybe I'll take a couple of the short ones out. And then with pheasant tail, when you when you're tying in pheasant tail for a purpose like this, you always want to cut the tips off to even it up. And uh, pheasant tail is pretty fragile at the tip. So you want to even it off like that. And then you just tie in your pheasant tail right in front of the wing case. And you can see because I've built up all that stuff, this bead is not going to slip back, particularly once I, once I wind the pheasant tail and, and form the wing case. And then I'll just take the pheasant tail and I usually take one turn and then I twist it. So the fibers stay together. Usually about two wraps is good. Then I'll secure it to the bottom. I'll secure it on the underside of the bead. Because I got I'm gonna have to attach the wing case to the top. And then I'll hold my thread up above the fly when I trim this so that I don't so that I don't cut my thread. So now you got your thorax built up. And again, you could use anything you want on the thorax, but I use pheasant tail. Then you just pull your wing case forward and secure it just behind the bead. Let your thread kind of roll off the back side of that bead. Stretch it a little bit. And put it right up against the bead. Make sure it's centered. Give it a couple more secure wraps. And pull it up. Cut it. And you'll be left with a couple of little ears there, which you want to then kind of grab with your thread and fold back so that it doesn't come out. And what you're trying to get is the, is the, the wing case and the thread and the bead kind of forming all one black piece. So it, it looks like, uh, you know, the wing cases on emerging mayflies, mayflies that are just ready to hatch 
are typically um, black or very dark. And then you whip finish. And you only need about three turns because I'm, I'm going to put um, UV resin on there. So three, four turns will be enough. And so that's what, uh, that's what it looks like. So as you can see, it's fairly simple. I don't put any legs on it because legs retard sink rate. And I don't think uh, legs are that important on most nymphs. They are... They're a little more important on stonefly nymphs because uh, stoneflies have more substantial legs, but uh, they do retard the sink rate. And I want this thing to sink as quickly as possible. So the, you know, the wire body and the pheasant tail and the bead uh, all help it sink fairly quickly without adding a lot of weight to it. And then I'm going to take some thin UV cure resin. and coat the wing case and the thread wraps. Hit it with my light. And that is the wire mayfly nymph. Fairly simple. Um, but it works. And again, it's, you know, it's a little more subtle nymph than some of you are used to. It doesn't clunk as hard as, as some of the jig flies. Uh, but it's for, it's for a different purpose. It's when you want a little bit more subtle fly without a lot of flash. The black bead, you know, kind of blends in. And um, sometimes fish get a little bit shy of all those gold beads. So that is the wire mayfly nymph. Questions. Questions, questions, questions. What other fly time materials are magical? I say pheasant tail, peacock curl, CDC, hair's ear, Michael, uh, hair's ear, hair's ear dubbing. Those are kind of the ones that are on my list. Bucktail, bucktail is kind of magical. People have tried to invent synthetic bucktail and they haven't, haven't quite gotten it. When you tie in the thin skin, do you care which side is up? No, because it's really the same on both sides. It's a little bit shinier on one side, but since I'm going to cover it with UV resin, it doesn't matter. Have you done a video on how to tie the game changer? I did it for one of these. Uh, it's probably in the archive somewhere. I did tie a game changer on one of these live sessions. Um, and there, there's also uh, a video or two of Blaine Chocolate tying game changer uh, on, on YouTube that you can look for, which is probably better than me tying it because it's his fly. Uh, how do you keep the wire from bumping up? I don't understand your question, Ed. Put uh, Maybe putting a little bit more pressure on it. Oh, good. Julia put up the link to the game changer. David says golden retriever and cocker spaniel are pretty magical. Yeah, not everybody can get that kind of stuff. Bunching up. And if if your if your wire is bunching up, then you might be using wire that's a little too thick. Uh, I, I use the I use the you might be using the brassy or the large size. I use the uh, size small and I don't have any trouble even on 18 with it bunching up. So not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you can add, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that question. 
Any other questions for me on this fly or in general? I finished kind of early today because it's an easy fly. When I wind the wire, it tends to get bumps as I wind forward. Hmm. I don't know, Ed, unless unless there was a kink in your wire to begin with. Did you um did you give yourself a nice thread underbody with it? I just noticed I have chocolate on my shirt. I made chocolate today. <laughs> Note to self, change shirts before you do live fly tying. <laughs> I find using your rotary function when winding helps with the bunching up. Oh, that's good. That's a good thought, Roger. Yeah, try, Ed, try using a rotor. If you have a rotary vice, try, because then you can watch, you can watch every angle uh, of it when you wind it. What color would you use for imitating uh, a Hendrickson or a sulfur? Dave, I would use these colors here. I would use uh, I would use a couple different shades of olive and a brown. Most of the the sulfurs and the Hendrickson. You might add for a sulfur, depending on which sulfur. Some of them are a little rustier. You might add more of a you might add uh, you might do a, like an olive, a brown, and a and a kind of a lighter rusty brown for the sulfurs or even a tan color ultra wire comes in such a wide variety of colors um, uh, and juicy uh no this is this is not imitating any specific species it's uh, it's a generic it's a generic mayfly and possibly even small stonefly nymph so no it's not any specific species how would you fish this nymph under an indicator or free line near the deck or what mike i would fish it anyway depending on the conditions i might fish it under an indicator uh, with another heavier nymph i might fish it under a dry dropper uh, in shallower water i might fish it euro style with a heavier nymph to help get it down and uh, i might fish it all by itself with no indicator and no dropper no dry dropper if i'm sight fishing in clear shallow water so you can fish it's, it's just a nymph you can fish it any way you want there's no specific uh, uh fishing method it's really con conditional to conditions what nymphs should you buy myst yt268 I, I suggest that if you want if you it sounds like you're um you're starting out and you want to start your fly collection i just did a video a few weeks ago on the 12 the 12 trout flies you should have and i think there's four nymphs in there uh it's on the orvis learning center and it's on youtube so if you uh if you google uh 12 flies tom rosenbauer uh or go to youtube and look for it you can you can find that and it'll give you some suggestions for basic flies Rod, I think, yeah, I, mean, I think that sometimes bright gold beads have too much flash. Sometimes they're needed, you know, in water, it's a little dirtier or maybe the water is really fast. I think that um, it helps it helps trout find your nymph, but other times in more clear water or where fish are fished over a lot and they've been caught and released on gold beads because the gold beads really don't look like anything in nature. They certainly work, uh, but, you know, um, where, where fish are pressured, where there's a lot of fishing pressure or where it's a little bit slower water, or very clear, then I think black beads do make sense. But, um, and, and I have both. I definitely have both. How do you keep the tip on your UV resin from clogging up? I don't know, Dan, uh, it doesn't clog for me. If once I put the top back on, um, you know, unless, unless it's exposed to UV light, it won't, cl it doesn't, won't, doesn't clog for me. Uh, be careful you don't you don't accidentally hit the tip of your uh, UV bottle with your UV light because that will clog it up. But uh, that stuff doesn't you know if you keep it covered it it won't it shouldn't clog up.
apart from a pheasant tail nymph, is there any other fly that uses no thread wire only? As far as I know, angling coach, the pheasant tail nymph, the gray goose, and the uh, killer bug, which were developed by Frank Sawyer, he was the one who used uh, the the fine wire for tying the bodies. You could you could theoretically tie any nymph with fine wire, but it's 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 not. It's not as good as thread, you know. It's it's really not as good as thread. And you can get we you know back when back in the days when Sawyer was was tying his pheasant tail nymphs, they didn't have beads, and I don't even know if they had lead wire available. They probably did, but they didn't use it. But um, and don't don't forget that Sawyer was fishing English chalk streams, and he was fishing very shallow, very clear water, and he didn't need a lot of weight. Uh, uh, the streams that that we fish in North America are typically much faster and much deeper, and um, we need more weight to get our flies down. What flies work best for rapids? I can't answer that question. Get those get those twelve flies, M Y S T Y T two sixty eight. Get those twelve flies and and try them. Kite's bare hook nymph is working for me. Oh yeah, that was one that was just just wire on a hook, right? Michael said I've I've tied threadless copper johns. I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm building a new fly bench. Is there a certain type of chair you find more comfortable than others? God, I think. You know, I use I just use a plain straight back chair, and you know I can't tie for more than an hour. I have to get up and walk around, which is probably a good idea, anyways. But I think it I think it's going to depend on on the height of your vice and your own your own posture and everything. I don't I don't know if there's any particular chair that that works better than others. I think it's an individual thing. Oh, good, Ed Ed tied number two, and it came out better. Great. Thanks to Tom and Roger. Roger, we're a good team. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, I think uh, that's all for today. Uh, next uh, next Monday is Memorial Day, so most of you are off, and I'm off. And um, the following week, uh, it's a Flagler-Rosenbauer tie-off, and we're going to tie some sort of uh, saltwater fly we i have it's my turn and i haven't decided which fly so i'll figure it out but it'll probably be some kind of striper fly um and um i, I promise the next time that i come on here i won't have chocolate on my shirt sorry about that so anyway um good tying to everyone get out there and enjoy the spring weather and um, tie some flies have some fun and don't take it too seriously. Thanks. <laughs>